What's up guys, I'm Justin Ball and welcome back to The Recording Percussionist, where I show you everything you need to know to get from that beginning stage of looking at a microphone or camera for the very first time to that intermediate stage where you feel confident in your ability to set up, record, and edit an entire recording session all on your own. So you've got your mic set up, your audio interface hooked up, and communicating successfully with your computer and digital audio workstation. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to record single and multi-track sessions in Adobe Audition. Let's do this. For future reference, I'm using Adobe Audition version 14.2. Assuming you've already got it downloaded, smash Control shift n to bring up a new audio file. Give it a name and set your sample rate to align with your audio hardware preferences that we set up previously. Remember that if we're recording a single track, we'll be recording in mono. And as discussed in the audio interface video, we'll be recording at 24-bit. Click OK and hit Shift Spacebar to start recording. Tap on your microphone lightly, and if you see the waveforms popping up and down in your session, congrats, you're officially recording sound. You can stop the recording by hitting Spacebar and play it back using Spacebar. If you don't like what you're hearing, hit Delete. If you want to pause the recording, use shift Control spacebar and use the same combination to resume the recording. We'll use this a lot more later on, but for now, let's just focus on recording sound, or sounds. If you're using two or more microphones, you'll want to start a multi-track session using Control in The only difference here is that you'll be setting the mix to stereo, which again means more than one channel, which we'll be panning left and right here in a second. All right, so this is what a multi-track session looks like. Everything you see here is called a workspace. Within this workspace, we have various panels, each one serving a different purpose or function. You can customize exactly which panels you have open at any given time, and even move them around and change the size of them. If you come up to Window, you can see all of the various panels available to you and customize which ones you want to have on or off. For a multi-track session, I typically have the editor, files, and markers tabs open, because those are the three I'll be using the most consistently. If I need any of these tabs to be open more consistently, I'll just turn it on in the window drop-down menu, or back off by right-clicking and closing the panel. Once you've got your workspace set up, come up and right-click on default, and save changes to this workspace so that each time you open a multi-track session, it looks just like this. The next thing we need to do is assign our microphones to separate channels. Today I'm at home, and for this demo I've got a Rode NT1 plugged into channel 1 on my audio interface, and an SM57 in channel 2. I've also got 48 volt phantom power turned on because the Rode NT1 is a condenser microphone. To get these two microphones recording sound in a multi-track session, first make sure that the input output button, which looks like two opposite facing arrows, is highlighted. In the left-hand menu of each track, you can see right and left arrows. Right is input, and left is output. To assign the microphone plugged in to channel 1 on my interface, click the Input drop-down menu in track 1. Go to Mono and Input 1. But why mono? I thought we were recording in stereo. Well, we will be, but you can't record in stereo with one microphone. Remember that we're not in stereo until we actually have two tracks and they're panned in opposite directions. Now let's do the same for track 2, but this time selecting mono input 2. The main difference between recording a single track and a multi-track in Audition is that in a multi-track session, you actually have to arm the track to record. We do this by highlighting this R up here in our track settings. Once you arm the track, you should see sound on your audio meter for that track, and you're only a space bar away from recording sound. You can pan the sound of the microphones to the left and right using this stereo balance slider. Next to this, we also have a volume slider. However, it's super important to understand that this is not input level or gain level. Gain refers to input, and in the case of microphones, is adjusted on the audio interface using the preamp knobs or some sort of external mixing application. Volume refers to output, or how strong the signal being played back is. You can see that as I adjust the volume when recording, it's not changing anything. However, after I've recorded sound and am playing it back, it does change the level of it. So, input versus output, very important. And that is Adobe Audition. 
Hopefully you feel a little bit more confident in your ability to navigate this incredible piece of software, but if you feel like we didn't cover much, you're absolutely right. Don't worry, we'll be digging way deeper into this stuff when we get to the audio editing series, in which every single video deals with something new in this program. If you dug this video, feel free to subscribe and check out the next one where we dive into the relationship between instrument and microphone placement. Until then, happy recording. Oh,